Hello, I am Marcus Printip, and now we're going to talk about this beast of an instrument, the trumpet. There are certain techniques that I've learned over the years that helped me just to get around playing this great, wonderful, noble instrument, as uh, Winton calls it. And there are a few techniques I want to share with you that can help you in your jazz playing and just your overall trumpet playing. The first key to playing trumpet, in my opinion, are long tones. And when I was a younger student, I didn't really have a teacher to tell me to practice long tones. And when I was playing the trumpet, I would always sound kind of, you know. There was no center to my sound. There was no, no soul to my sound. And then I started practicing long tones. Now, you may ask, how do you practice long tones? What does that mean? There are many different ways to practice them. Just get some method books. The Arbin's book is a great source for practicing long tones. But I have a few exercises I do. I play a low C, and then I play a high C, or middle C. Each note for about 20, 30 seconds, and I always practice with a metronome. And the metronome will be on 60 beats per minute. Let me get it set up right now for you. I'm just gonna do just a few of these just to show you how I do it. And when you're practicing long tones, you want to try to just um, imagine a big balloon being on the bell of your horn. If that balloon does this, goes back and forth, it means that your air is not working properly. It's got to constantly expand, just like this. So if, if, I, if I, you find yourself wavering like this, that means that your air is not flowing properly. So you want to have a nice posture this has to be loose here. Um, all the air has to come from your gut. So here we go. One, two. Okay, and you know, just for the, for the sake of time, I'll do that 20, 30, maybe 40 seconds, but always with the metronome and always trying to keep my tone centered. Then I'll take 10 seconds off, then I'll go to the octave C. One, two, A. And so on. Then from there, I'll go to the B. Play that 20, 30, 40 seconds, take 10 seconds off. Then to the low octave B. Play that 30, 40 seconds, take 10 seconds off. Then to the B flat. Same thing, 20, 30, 40 seconds. Take um, 10 seconds off, then to the high B flat. Then. So all those notes, play them 20, 30, 40 seconds. This exercise takes about 15 to 20 minutes. You know, people talk about long tones helping your sound. They, they actually help more than your sound. They, they help your breath capacity, of course. A lot of times when I'm challenging my breath capacity, well, I actually have asthma. When I have asthma and I practice long tones, my breath capacity is much shorter. But the more I practice them, the more my lungs will expand. It's like an exercise for, for my lungs. So I should tell people who have asthma, if you want to get over it, just practice long tones. They help your airflow. They help your range. I'll explain that in a minute. And they help your sound as well. And if you ask how do long tones help my range, you can practice long tones up high. Many younger students ask me how do I play in the high register, and I ask them if they ever practice up in the high register. And a lot of them don't because they're afraid to go up there. So the safest way to develop a high register is just to practice playing up there. Let's say you're having a problem hitting a high C. Now find a note below the high C that you feel comfortable hitting. Maybe it's a G. Okay, now get your metronome, 60 beats per minute, play the G for like 10, 15 seconds. Okay, then take a break. Now go to the next highest note, the A flat. And so on. And if you do this every day, the A flat, then the A, then the B flat, then the B, and then that C that you're having problems hitting, if you do that every day, what happens is that your armature gets set 
Um, but your armature, of course, is your lip placement and how your, your lips hit the mouthpiece. Your muscles will start to form. So sooner or later, that, the, the, the C is going to come out naturally because you practice how your, your, your armature feels playing it up in that high register. I have a certain setting for like a high G and I can just play it like this. I'm putting myself on the spot, but because I do long tones and because I do um, long tones up high and many other things, lip slurs, I can find that note. It comes out easily. And before I did long tones up high, I couldn't do that. So long tones will help get your range, your sound, your armature placement, your flexibility in a sense as well, and uh, your breath capacity. The next thing I want to show you guys really quickly is something called whisper tones. And they're very boring exercises, um, and it's, they're very difficult to do at first, but I just basically stay on a G. And I play the G as softly as I possibly can, where it's a whisper, like this. Okay, and you may ask, how does that help my trumpet playing or my range? It focuses on these muscles right here, um, on your, your upper lip and your bottom lip. So just find your setting, your placement, and just play those whisper tones really softly, like maybe 10 minutes a day. You can just stay on that G if you want to. I think Wynton Marsalis told me that he, he does a low G to high G, you know, 30, 40 seconds each. Um, I do it that way sometimes, but for the most part, I just stay on that one G and just really get myself centered. And when I finish, it's, my, my lips are very tingly. And just like when you work out, if you lift weights, when you finish, your, your arms are gonna expand, you're gonna be all tingly. It's the same thing with your mouth. It's, you know, there, you know, there are muscles to be formed there. So whisper tones are excellent for just getting, and they are, they're, they're good for range, but they're also good for alleviating pressure. When I was younger, I played with a lot of pressure. I would basically, you know, force a mouthpiece into my teeth. But now doing those whisper tones, the fact that these, this part of my lip is much stronger, I don't use as much pressure. So that's going to help a lot of young trumpet players to not force their sounds as well. Now the next thing I want to talk about, tonguing exercises. There's something, there's a book that's called The Goldman, G-O-L-D-M-A-N, Trumpet Method. And I'm going to play this one exercise. It's basically like a diatonic scale exercise. You can do this in all 12 keys as well. So here's the exercise. Okay, now just do that in all 12 keys and all of a sudden, you know, your tongue's gonna start working differently because you're working that muscle out as you would if you're doing some curls or some whatever exercise you do. Now for your fingers, you guys should get a Herbert L. Clark trumpet study book. Um, it's a famous exercise that I know you've all heard. Um, it's great for your fingers and it goes something like this. This exercise, I think it's the second exercise in, in, in the Clark study book, but do that, do that in all 12 keys as well. And if you notice, um, that was on one and three. One, two, three, four, one. If you want to practice swinging those, think of the measure on one, two, and four. One, two, uh, mm, mm. 